So I'd love an electric car, but I don't have room for one of the chargers in my driveway. I'm here with Chris Pateman Jones from Connected Curb, and he says he might have a solution. So Connected Curb is a startup in the electric vehicle charging space. We're an award-winning startup. Uh, we focus primarily on the residential charging market and the long-stay parking market. Um, and we differentiate ourselves by that focus on residential parking, where the majority of cars sit for 95% of the time not being used. So the focus there is on slow trickle charging. You don't need to fast charge if your car's sitting there not being used. Uh, we aim to try and enable smart cities, so the technology is really smart and clever. It sits beneath the ground, so it's environmentally friendly um, and smart enabled. Uh, and then we're also focused on trying to deliver value to as many different people as possible, so to smart cities, uh, to investors and to users alike. How does the company and the product differ from what's already on the market? Okay, so uh, one of the key barriers that we see for adoption of electric vehicles is that users just don't have confidence um, in the actual network being available and there's also no convenience about charging your vehicle. So at the moment, unless you have off-street parking, uh, where you can install your own home charger, you have to drive to a destination charger, and that's just not convenient. We also don't think it will be convenient in the future because we're at very, very low penetration levels for electric vehicles at the moment, and yet there is already waiting times at some of the fast charging networks. So now we actually want to try and prioritise investment into that residential and long-stay parking market where we think it is convenient. The other piece is we try to focus on this confidence piece. So actually, if you... If you go to a lot of charging points now, you'll see where I live in Richmond, there's a number that are out of service. Um, and that represents a real problem. If you need to charge your vehicle, you need the system to be reliable. So we've designed a product where all of the sensitive, clever technology sits beneath the ground, so it can't be damaged. It's very safe and protected. That also minimizes the visual disruption to the street of installing the technology. And so what that means is we have really high uptimes. So our, our, our system is robust and reliable. And then if anything does go wrong with it, our repair time is roughly 30 minutes, or in actual fact, significantly under that if we can. And how does data play into your business model? It's got quite an important role. So our technology that sits beneath the ground is, uh, is 4G enabled at the moment. It will be 5G fairly soon. When we deploy our units, we aim to deploy that 5G or 4G connectivity um, for that reason. The other aspect is that if you imagine charging points being deployed across residential and urban areas, it's going to fundamentally change the look and feel of our streets. So we've tried to design a product which is as low visual impact as possible and as environmentally friendly as possible, so 80% recycled materials. But we're also trying to develop something which people want to have on their streets. And one of the aspects of that is actually if we install this, we create a Wi-Fi network which everyone can use. So you can log into the system and you're able to use that Wi-Fi network. That is a huge benefit to residential properties. Yeah, those are lots of benefits there that aren't going to be present in, you know, the petrol station charges we hear about, uh, where there's maybe <coughs> two per forecourt. And what, what, why do you think these petrol station charges aren't going to take off? And the same with charges in driveways. The two points there. So the petrol station piece, um, we think they are actually fundamental to the, to the adoption of EV. They, 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 they uh, remove people's fears about... Um, uh, about range anxiety. It's familiar, I suppose. Yeah, so, um, and it's also a very important part of the business model for the oil and gas companies going forward. But, but in terms of the actual EV user, if they are worried about range anxiety, having those sort of arterial network fast charges is very important to overcome that range anxiety. And they will be important for long journeys. However, the vast majority of journeys, I think it's 80% of journeys, are below 30 miles. So you won't need those charging points. The other reason why fast chargers we think are, are going to be a challenge is the cost of them. So they are prohibitively expensive and that's because of the infrastructure you have to build around them to support them. Um, and actually from a grid perspective they're not that helpful. The other reason why we think that the residential piece will move forward is that if you charge in a residential area where your car is plugged in for the majority of the time, you actually enable things like vehicle to grid. So from a UK wide scale, the ability to feed power back into the grid and manage some of the demand profile challenges we have is really important. And you can't do that if you're charging for a short period of time at a fast charger. Your, your question about the off-street um, piece, we actually do think that's a huge opportunity and we think that will continue to grow. The problem we have with that is that we think EVs should be for everyone. And unfortunately, there's a direct correlation in urban areas between the wealthy and those who have off-street parking. And actually, if you want everyone to have EV and everyone to be able to switch from ICE to EV, you have to enable even people who don't have off-street parking to charge. And that's, again, why we're focused on the on-street residential piece. 
When do you think we're going to see the real tipping point uh, for electric vehicles? When are they going to reach critical mass and replace internal combustion engine cars? Yeah, so we had, um, we actually had a big debate about that this morning um, in the office, and I think it's a very difficult one. Um, and so I don't want to hang my, my hat on this, but I actually think it's going to be quicker than anyone's forecasting. So I think already you're going to see government targets moving forward. So they're 2040 at the moment. I think the Scottish Parliament has moved it forward to 2032, I think. Um, but I actually don't think that's going to be the main driver. I, th I think there's already an awful lot of momentum within the public wanting to buy this. It's both better for the environment, so there's an awful lot of um, uh, talk in the media at the moment about the effect of air quality on all of us. So I think there's an environmental thing that the public is very, very well aware of at the moment, and people are wanting to buy EVs for those, re those reasons. Um, but there's also the pure economics of it. So if, you're, if it costs you significantly less to charge your car than it does to put fuel into it, then it makes sense for most people to do it. And then the third piece is that EVs are just cool. So a lot of the big car manufacturers now, the cars they're bringing to the market, all of their design teams are focused on making the electric vehicles the cool sort of brand ambassador product for them. So I think people want to buy the EVs. There is the barrier still that's stopping people, and that barrier I don't actually think is range anxiety. I think it is the infrastructure. So if you enjoyed the video you've just watched, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.